All right, this is fifth grade, module four, lesson three. We're going to continue interpreting fractions as division problems. Uh, for example, let's say we have eight divided by three. A couple of ways we can solve this problem. Uh, first way is we can say, well, we're going to take these eight, let's imagine these to be eight cookies, and we're going to divide them amongst three people. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, and we can see that, well, first off, we can give each person two whole cookies. One, two, one, two, one whole, uh, two whole cookies. So that means we've just used up six cookies. And then uh, we don't have enough cookies to give each person a whole cookie, so we can cut each one of these into thirds. And then we can see that each person is going to get two-thirds. One, two, one, two, because that means this, these two-thirds goes to the first person, these two-thirds goes to the middle person, and then these last two-thirds goes to the third and final person. So we can see that each person gets two holes and two thirds, two and two thirds. All right, so that's the first one. Now another way we could think of this is we can start by taking these eight cookies and immediately cut them into thirds, all of them, cut them into thirds. So I'm going to rewrite this. So when we have eight divided by three, we can think of this as 24 thirds divided by 3. So instead of thinking of this as 8 wholes, I can think of it as 24 thirds. So now we have 24 thirds divided by 3. Well, what's 24 divided by 3? Oh, it's 8. So 24 thirds divided by 3 equals 8 thirds. Now 8 thirds, if you think about what 8 thirds is, that's going to be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 thirds is right here. Each person gets 8 thirds. Well, that's two holes plus two-thirds. Two holes plus two-thirds. So we can see that, I mean, the whole thing that we want uh, teachers, we want our students to learn is that eight-thirds, or eight divided by three, is equal to eight-thirds, because we just showed it right up here, and that eight-thirds is equal to two and two-thirds, all right? And that's the big thing. This is where we're going, and today we're really going to be starting to move uh, to that standard algorithm for changing a fraction, like 8 thirds, into a mixed number. All right, so we're going to make some connections here. So we do have a mixed number here, and we have one whole plus two fifths. And so I can think of that one whole as being five fifths plus the two-fifths, so our improper fraction is seven-fifths, although technically the standards, our common core standards, don't have, uh, don't distinguish between improper fractions and fractions, but for the sake of this Engage New York video, they're calling it improper fractions, and so I will too. So seven-fifths is our improper fraction, and that means we know way over here the division expression is 7 fifths. Now, like I just showed you in the previous example, if we have 7 wholes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 wholes, um, and that's this 7 right here, and we're going to cut each one of those into 5 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means we now have 35 fifths. And 35 fifths 
divided by 5 gives us 7 fifths. And you know what? We knew that because it says so here, 7 fifths. So see how all of these connections are happening? And then, way over here, they want us to use the standard algorithm for turning the improper fraction into a mixed number. So let's do that. So that's going to be 7 divided by 5. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. 7 divided by 5. Well, 5 goes into 7 one whole time. One whole time. And we subtract, and we have 2 left over. So our fraction is 1 whole and 2 fifths. Now, in order to check it, what they want us to do is to show that, to check it, I'm going to write the word check, and they want us to show that 5 times 1 and 2 fifths is equal to 7. Well, the way we're going to do that right now, because we haven't quite learned how to multiply mixed numbers yet, 5 times 1 and 2 fifths means we're going to add 1 and 2 fifths 5 times. And now we're ready to add. So I'm going to start by adding all the whole numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that equals 5 plus, now I'm going to add the fractions. 2 fifths plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths, 2 fifths plus 2 fifths. That equals uh, 10 fifths. Now that's equal to 2. So 5 plus 2 equals 7. And sure enough, that's exactly what it's supposed to equal. And so that is that whole big old problem right there. You may want to pause this and, and just look at this completed screen to see if you can understand the connections uh, between all of these different ways of thinking of 5 divided by, se I mean, 7 divided by 5. This one I'm just going to go a little bit quicker because we've kind of seen it already. And I'm going to start by dividing. So 7 divided by 2 is 3, with 1 left over. So we have 3 and a half is our mixed number. And then 7 divided by 2, a lot of students are going to incorrectly call this 2 divided by 7. Totally wrong. So 7 divided by 2 is our improper fraction. And now that we know 7 divided by 2, we can go all the way over here and write down 7 divided by 2. And then 7 divided by 2. Think about our 7 wholes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And each one of them is going to be cut in half. So that means we now have 14 halves divided by 2. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 7 halves. And sure enough, 7 divided by 2, 7 halves, 7 over 2, these all obvious connections. Now, I need to check it, so what we're going to do is, I'll write the word check, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So 2, whoop, 2 times 3 and a half, and that had better equal 7, all right, because that's how you're going to check it. When you divide, the way you check it is by multiplying. So 2 times 3 and a half. So that's 3 and a half plus 3 and a half. So 3 plus 3 is 6 plus, and then 1 half plus 1 half equals 2 halves. So that's a whole. So we end up with 6 plus 1, which is equal to 7, and that's exactly what we wanted all along. So that means we did the math correctly. And you, again, you might want to pause this and kind of look at this and make sure you understand how everything is connected to everything else. Now, a classic word problem. Polly buys 14 cupcakes for a party. I want to go to that party. And the bakery puts them into boxes that hold four cupcakes each. How many boxes will be needed for Polly to bring all the cupcakes to the party? And explain how you know. All right, so 
couple ways we could do this. One, we could just do straight up numbers. We could do 14 divided by 4, and then we can divide. So 14 divided by 4, and 4 goes into 14 three times. That's 12 with 2 left over. So now what's the big question? What's the question? It says, how many boxes will Polly need? Well, we know we've got, we need three whole boxes because that's what the three is for. But this little two left over means we've got two cupcakes left over. So really, we're going to need four boxes. because uh, we have, we need to carry them all. And we have three full boxes, but then we have this extra box that's only going to have two cupcakes in it instead of the normal four. So we're going to have four boxes. All right. Now the next question, B, says, if the bakery completely fills as many boxes as possible, if the bakery completely fills as many boxes as possible, what fraction of the last box is empty? So that last box is only going to have two cupcakes. So we're going to have three completed boxes, full boxes, and I'll draw them right here. One, two, three. I mean, one, two, three, four. There's our three full boxes with um, a cupcake in each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then our last box is only going to have two cupcakes in it. One, two. And so the last question, the question down here says, what fraction of that last box is empty? We can see. Well, we can either write two-fourths is empty, or we can call it one-half. How many more cupcakes are needed? We need two more cupcakes in order to fill that last box. Two more. One, two. And I volunteer to eat all of them. Oops, look at that. I missed a cupcake up there. There, done. And that is Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 3, where we continue interpreting fractions as division.